Welcome back everyone. In this video we'll be making diethyl ether, an extremely useful solvent especially for organic extractions. There are several great videos on YouTube on the synthesis of ether, however I plan to use ether in a lot of my future videos and wanted to be able to reference my own video. Before we start, a quick warning. Ether is an extremely flammable solvent and can form explosive peroxides. If mixed with oxygen in the air it can become explosive. Ether is heavier than air and tends to hug the floors going undetected. Be sure that you perform this reaction outside or in a fume hood. Concentrated sulfuric acid is dangerous and can burn and blind you. No one understand the risk before attempting any reaction and wear proper safety gear to avoid exposure. Okay, with all the warnings out of the way we can get started. Begin by setting a 1 liter, 2 neck, round bottom flask in an ice bath on top of a magnetic stirrer. To that flask slowly add 160 milliliters of concentrated 98% sulfuric acid and begin stirring. You can also use hardware store plumber variety acid if you like, however your yield may suffer slightly. Now in the side neck of the flask add a thistle funnel if you have one. It is not imperative that you use one, it just keeps the ethanol from sitting on top of the sulfuric acid. Now attach an addition funnel to your stand just above the thistle funnel. Pour into it 200 milliliters of ethanol. I'm using Everclear. Begin to slowly add the ethanol drop by drop into the thistle funnel. The ethanol needs to be added so that the ethanol and acid mixture does not heat up. For me the entire addition took about 20 minutes. Many users place the acid and ethanol in a freezer and then add them together. This also works, however your time is spent in that method on waiting on the acid and ethanol to get to zero C. Either way the temperature needs to stay low so that side reactions do not occur. Once all the ethanol is in the flask, set up for simple distillation with the thermometer in the side neck taking the temperature of the mixture. Now add some silicon dioxide to the flask. I'm using lab grade. The sand will allow for even boiling of the mixture. You can also use regular beach sand, but you'll need to make sure that it's very clean. After the addition of the sand, place the addition funnel with 500 milliliters of ethanol where the thermometer normally goes. Then add your condensing column and receiving flask, and then turn on the water to begin cooling. After everything is set up, you can begin heating your mixture. We're looking to heat between 145 to 149 degrees C. It is very important that the temperature is kept below 150 C, otherwise our major product will become the elimination reaction and will begin to start to form ethylene gas. Once you start to get your product coming over, you can begin to open up your addition funnel and match its drip rate to that of the receiving flask. It's also very important to use as long a condensing column as possible. If you use too small of a condensing column, the ether will not fully condense before exiting the column. This can be extremely dangerous as the ether vapor may make it out the vacuum takeoff adapter, filling the work area with flammable vapors. The auto ignition temperature of ether is only 170 C, so it can be ignited by a hot surface without a flame or spark. As far as the reaction goes, we're performing an acid ether synthesis. Sulfuric acid dissociates producing hydrogen ions. The hydrogen ion then protonates the electronegative oxygen atom of the ethanol, giving the ethanol molecule a positive charge as can be seen in this equation. A nucleophilic oxygen atom of an unprotonated ethanol molecule displaces a water molecule from the protonated electrophilic ethanol molecule, producing water, diethyl ether, and regenerating our acid. Once formed, the ether is removed by distillation, allowing for more ether to form. As the amount of water increases, the less ether forms until nearly no ether forms at all. I ran 500 milliliters of ethanol through the addition funnel and then let the reaction run for about 15 minutes after everything was added. When done, I poured all the distillate into a large SEP funnel. To the SEP funnel, I add about 200 milliliters of a 10% hydroxide and water solution to remove any acid. I shake thoroughly, venting often. When done, I let it set for a few seconds. Sometimes it'll go ahead and form two layers. If you have a flask big enough to hold everything, you can distill all of this. If you don't, 
You can get it to form two layers by adding a saturated solution of salt and water. This will force it to separate into two layers and help to pull out any water and ethanol from the ether layer. After setting for 30 minutes, you can remove the bottom water layer and discard it or distill it. Ether is slightly soluble in water, so if you do distill it, you'll recover about 15 to 20 milliliters of ether. Either way, place the top layer in a flask with the clean silicon dioxide you used earlier and set up for simple distillation. The ether will start to come over at about 35 degrees C. The water you run through the condensing column will need to be ice cold and the receiving flask should also have ice packed around it. I'm not doing this right now so you can see what's going on. However, after shooting this video, I quickly added the ice. A lot of people prefer to use hot water bath or a steam bath since they provide better safety when heating ether than an electric operated device like this heating mantle does. Using any electric device, including turning on and off the lights, while distilling ether is a big risk. I'm relying on a 50 centimeter long ice cold condensing column and a very good fume hood to keep the ether vapors in control. When running this reaction, I smell no ether. However, I keep a fire extinguisher close at hand just in case. Do not leave this distillation alone for even a second. I was able to distill about 300 milliliters of ether. This ether will have a small amount of ethanol in it. If you wish to remove it, you will need to perform a fractional distillation. This is unnecessary for my purposes. Place what you distill on a magnetic stir and add a magnetic stir bar. Now add about 30 grams of calcium chloride and stopper the flask. Let this stir for about 30 minutes. Longer is better. This will remove any water. This is about as dry as we will need for any of my upcoming videos. Later I plan to do a video on the Grignard reaction when we'll need very pure, very dry ether. So expect a video on ether purification in the future. For now just take the ether and pour it into an amber bottle and store in a lab freezer. If you plan to store it for a long time, you can store it over solid potassium hydroxide and it will keep any dangerous peroxides from forming. I'll be using what I make here in my next video. Until then, thanks for watching.